If you're looking for a resin 3D printer that combines a large print volume, incredible detail, and smart features that make resin printing easier, the Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro might just be the one to watch. With 14K resolution, automated resin filling and draining, a heated and circulating vat, and four sensors that can actually catch failed prints mid-job, this machine comes loaded with premium features. But the best part? It comes in at a surprisingly low price for everything it offers. Stick around, because in this review I'll show you everything from setup, to print quality tests, to the clever features that make the M7 Pro stand out. Welcome back to Hoffman Engineering, let's get into it. Before we begin, this M7 Pro was sent for me to review by Anycubic. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, from printers, resin, or accessories, then you can use those links to help support my channel. We appreciate it. The Photon Mono M7 Pro is the latest in Anycubic's line of resin 3D printers. It is packed full of features to really earned that Pro name, and we'll go through each of them. The M7 Pro has a print volume of 126mm by 223mm by 230mm tall. This is a rather large print volume for a resin printer. You can really pack the build plate full. And speaking of the build plates, the M7 Pro has a laser engraved build plate. I found that this pattern gives the build plates the perfect amount of adhesion. Prints stuck firmly to the plate while printing, yet they were mostly easy to remove afterwards. I only had one print that did not release cleanly, and that was this Eiffel Tower that I printed directly on the bed. I ended up snapping a foot off accidentally, but with rafts and supports, all my other tests were easy to remove. And after a month of testing, there are only a few scrapes on the bed from all of my printing. This was a great bed. The bed is supported by dual linear rails. This gives the bed plenty of support, and I experienced no Z-wobbling even on the tallest prints. The M7 Pro has what Anycubic calls the Light Turbo 3.0 Optical System. Their marketing page is plastered with jargon like chip on board light source with Fresnel lenses and front-facing reflectors maintain light at less than 3 degrees. What this means in practice is that the M7 Pro has an extremely uniform UV light source. If you run a test pattern, you can see that the screen lights up very uniformly. Compared to my older Anycubic Photon Mono M5, it's clear that the older M5's UV lights overlap and that overlap will overcure prints in those areas. The M7's light source is a big improvement. The camera can pick up some of the Fresnel lens patterns in the light, but I was unable to see any artifacts on any prints due to that. The M7 Pro has a 14K resolution, resulting in a pixel size of just 16.8 by 24.8 microns. That is a very high resolution, which we'll see more of later on in this video. The M7 Pro comes with a temperature-controlled resin vat. It will detect if the resin is below the optimal printing temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, and heat it up if necessary. This improves viscosity and lets the resin flow better. The vat also has a peristaltic pump and interior channels to circulate the resin, mixing the resin so that the temperature is even throughout. To test, I set the temperature to 35 degrees Celsius and started heating. We can see that the pump runs, and then the heater kicks on. The heater quickly warms to 70 degrees Celsius, and over the next few minutes we see the warm resin being circulated around the vat. It does tend to overshoot the temperature, but not so much that I would think that it would degrade the resin. It's currently summertime in Florida, so my studio is generally kept warm enough to where the resin viscosity isn't a problem. But during the winter, having a heated resin vat would be a great feature to have on hand. The ACF film has a matte finish. This is the first matte film that I've used, but it seems to work great. I wasn't sure if this would lead to a loss of detail in my prints, but I certainly did not experience that. And this vat lasted a long time, with no visible damage or degradation after a month of testing. But my favorite feature has to be the automatic resin fill and empty. Simply screw the special resin cap onto your bottle of resin, and connect the air and resin lines. And then the M7 Pro will lower the probe into the resin vat, and start pumping resin into the vat. It's constantly monitoring the resin levels, and continues to pump until the vat is filled and ready to print. The automatic filling takes about 4 minutes to fully fill the vat. But my favorite feature is what happens after you have finished the print. When you are done printing, you can press the retrieval button, and the M7 Pro will automatically empty the resin back into the bottle for you. This is a game changer, and the best feature of the M7 Pro in my eyes. It works best if you use the plastic scraper to help move the resin back into the suction probe. But after only a few minutes, almost all of the resin has been pulled back into the bottle. The remaining resin can easily be cleaned up with a single paper towel. No longer do you have to cautiously handle a vat full of resin and try to pour it back into the bottle before you turn into an as-seen-on-TV model. You can just press a button, scrape the resin a bit, and then wipe up the remaining. I love this feature, and I'm already missing it on other resin printers that I use. There is a drawback to the M7 Pro's heating vat and autofill system, and that 
is resin cross-contamination. The tubing that the autofill uses can't fully remove all of the resin inside of the tube. If you switch colors or types of resin, when you start filling from the new bottle, some of the old resin will be mixed in. But the bigger culprit is the heating resin vat. There will always be old resin that remains inside of the channels on the vat that circulates the resin. The M7 Pro does have a cleaning function, where you pour in alcohol into the vat and it will circulate and clean out those channels. But then you have to deal with that solvent afterward. If you don't clean out those channels, then you will definitely get cross-contamination of the old resin and the new resin. For someone like me, that really isn't that big of a deal. I am more than happy to just stir together the resin to make the color uniform. That is a trade-off that I'm generally willing to make for the convenience of the autofill and empty. But if you are the type of person who constantly switches resin types or colors, and you can't risk slight color or material property changes, then you should just pick up the non-temperature controlled resin vat and manually pour in your resin. There is a limitation on the autofill system, in that it relies on a cap that screws onto a resin bottle. I have a bunch of different bottles of resins from different manufacturers, Anycubic, Elegoo, Nova 3D, Sunlu, Rich Opto, and Formlabs. Trying the cap on all of them, it only worked with 1 liter bottles from Anycubic and Elegoo. Other brands, or Anycubic bottles less than 1 liter will not work with the autofill cap. You could always pour other brands into an empty Anycubic bottle, or design and print an adapter. But that is a limitation to know about. Back to the printer itself, the M7 Pro has a 4.3 inch full color touchscreen display. The menus are neatly laid out, and it's easy to select prints, adjust settings, and walk through any of the calibration steps. It has Wi-Fi capabilities, so you can remotely send print jobs to and monitor the printer. And you can wirelessly apply firmware updates. The M7 Pro has a load of other advanced features. It has force sensors constantly monitoring the force applied to the screen. This force can be displayed alongside the area being printed. The M7 Pro uses that force data to detect print failures. If it notices abnormal readings, either due to no force or too high of a force, it will pause the print job and report an error. This will detect failed prints, prints that didn't stick to the bed, or even residual pieces of resin left over in the resin vat from a previous print. We can see that if I throw in a small piece of support, when I start the next prints, it detects that piece of debris and throws an error. The M7 Pro also has some intelligent algorithms to increase print speed and reliability. When starting prints with large surface areas, off compensation will adjust the time between layers to allow for resin to more reliably flow back between the layers. And their intelligent release feature will use the force data to optimize the print time of each layer. Resin printing requires a lot of post-processing after the prints come off of the printer. The M7 Pro doesn't come with any washing or post-curing features, but Anycubic does sell various wash and cure stations. I'd recommend pairing it with the Anycubic Cubic Wash & Cure 3 Plus. It has a large enough wash tank to handle the M7 Pro's print volume, and it's very convenient to use. But you can also use other Wash & Cure setups, like the Hay Gears Wash & Cure shown here. You can find more information about this setup in my previous review linked here. Setting up the M7 Pro was a pretty simple process. It is well packaged with plenty of foam to protect it. The first step is to apply the screen protector. It did take a few minutes to make sure that it is aligned correctly and all the bubbles are removed. Then we add the resin vat and attach the print bed. Then plug in the autofill attachment and secure it with two screws. Shake your resin bottle, screw in the autofill cap, and you're ready to go. The M7 Pro walks you through the setup process on the touchscreen. After connecting to your Wi-Fi network, you can check for firmware updates, and then start the autofill to fill the resin tank. The M7 Pro comes with a print bed pre-leveled for you, and my level was perfect, and I never had to re-level the bed during my tests. Anycubic recommends re-leveling the bed only if you have done something major, like dropping the printer, purchasing a replacement print bed, or if you notice consistently failed prints. The printer will walk you through the process if needed, but I was happy to not have to worry about leveling with a brand new printer. Anycubic recommends that you use their slicer, the Anycubic Photon Workshop, and it is a pretty decent slicer. They have nice built-in profiles for the M7 Pro, including normal and fast resin settings. After importing your designs, you have most of the tools you'd expect, including the ability to hollow apart and add drain holes, and to automatically add and customize supports. The only feature that is missing is an auto orientation feature. For some reason, the software can't recommend an ideal printing orientation. You have to determine what orientation works best and rotate the part manually, but that's the only feature that I found missing. Once you slice the file, you can remotely send the job to the printer and monitor the print from within the slicer. You aren't limited to any cubic slicer though. You can use other slicers, like Chitubox. Chitubox has built-in profiles for the M7 Pro. The only difference with Chitubox is that you will have to save the sliced file onto a USB stick to transfer it to the printer. There is no remote monitoring from within the slicer, but if you want to experiment with different slicers, you can with the M7 Pro. Anycubic also has an app for iOS and Android. With the app, you can remotely monitor your printer and get alerts when prints have finished or error. It is certainly a nice to have feature. When I tested the debris detection feature, I got a push notification with the error, and we can see it clearly within the app. With all of the specs out of the way, let's take a look at how well 
Rockwall the Anycubic M7 Pro print. For my tests, I am using Anycubic Standard Resin in both gray and black. The gray resin has an awesome matte appearance and looks really good on camera. The black is a very deep black, and the details are incredible in person, but are harder to show on camera. Turning to the gray resin, this vase is one of the sample files that comes preloaded on the printer, and it's a great showcase of the detail that the M7 Pro can produce. There are very fine details all over the print, and everything from the textured backgrounds to the individual pearls of the filigree look good. The only defects are from the supports, which were pretty tough to remove. I'm not sure what support settings they have enabled, but they could have done with fewer and thinner supports. Another sample file was this test tower. This tower uses the full 230 millimeters of the printer and incredibly only took two hours and 10 minutes to print. This showcases the incredible speed of the M7 Pro. This is such a great print. From the stone texture of the base to the details within the various dragons, they all show that the M7 Pro wasn't lying about either speed or resolution. This Chitu box calibration test file has some pretty good results. The thin pillars and small text all printed without issue as did the thin box walls. And the lattice work in the back looks great. The only area where it struggled was on the support pillar tests. It printed the light pillars, but not the cylinders that they were supposed to print. The medium supports printed fine, but for some reason the heavy support pillars did not print. Overall, I am very happy with the results of this test file. This magic lamp was scaled up to the largest that could fit on the build plate. The matte appearance looks great, but the side with supports look a little rougher. This resin is nice and sandable, however, so the resin marks would be relatively easy to clean up. This mask was also scaled to take up the entire print volume, and I loved how it turned out. This is a tough print, with the two separate sides only connecting at the very top of the mask. Plenty of time for the layers to shift and become misaligned, and there are a couple of slight shifts where the tusks started to form. I also missed a couple of drain holes that I had to manually drill out afterwards to drain the resin that was stuck inside. Always remember to add at least two drain holes to all cavities. This mask is also the only example of resin cross-contamination in all of my test prints. You can see a bit of black that remained unmixed in this print. I didn't notice this on any of my other tests. This Valara the Soulbinder figurine printed in four pieces and assembled with super glue without issues. I love the detail in the armor, the braids in the hair, and the headdress of this model. Miniatures also printed well in the gray resin. Some of the details get washed out with the matte resin, but they printed just fine and supports were easy to remove without damaging the models. So let's move to the black resin. This Joyful Yell and Bearded Yell models are some of my favorites, and they turned out really well on the M7 Pro. The Bearded Yell in particular looks incredible. The details of the hair and braids really show through. The Joyful Yell was printed almost flat on her back, and you can see some layers that had some shifts from the transitions from supports to prints. A different orientation probably would have been better. This Shadow of the Blood Moon diorama turned out amazing on the M7 Pro. You can really see all of the details in the crossbow, and the thin arrows stuck in Camilla printed without issues, and assembly was very easy. All the parts fit together nicely, and only some super glue was needed to keep it all together. And of course I had to print the Eiffel Tower. This is my only partial failure during my tests. It printed beautifully, but I broke two of the feet when I tried to remove it from the print bed. But the tower looks good. All of the interior latticework printed without issues. There is a single separated layer at the overhang at the top of the tower. Miniatures also look good from the M7 Pro. Plenty of detail showing through. The black standard resin becomes slightly translucent in the thinner areas like the wings. In in conclusion, the Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro is certainly worthy of its Pro naming. It is packed full of features that increase print quality and print speed, while adding quality of life improvements to make working with resin a little easier. The standout feature to me is the automatic resin fill and retrieval systems. Not having to pour a vat full of resin back into the bottle makes it much more convenient to just do a quick print. You don't have to worry about resin sitting in the vat too long and pigment separating. You can just suck it back into the bottle when done. The temperature controlled resin vat will be great for winters and ensure that the resin is at the optimal printing temperatures. You do need to know about the cross contamination of old and new resins due to remnants in the autofill and heating vat channels. But for my usual printing, that doesn't bother me too much. If that risk is a problem for you, you can always manually add resin and purchase the normal non heated vat. And the four sensors constantly monitoring for a number of print failure modes can give some peace of mind to the printing process. The slicer is adequate, although I wish it had an auto-orient feature that would streamline the process, but the pre-built profiles worked great, and the M7 Pro was quick to assemble and get up and running. Part of that is due to the M7 Pro coming pre-leveled. Somehow that leveling survives shipping, but it lets you skip a step during assembly and get printing faster. Printing the full 230mm build heights in just over 2 hours is incredibly fast, and shows that the work Anycubic has done to optimize the speed while retaining quality. I was pretty impressed by 
buy the entire package of the Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro, and I give it a great recommendation. The Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro is on sale for $459 US dollars at the time of recording. If you are looking to pick up a Wash & Cure station, you can bundle the Wash & Cure 3 Plus with the M7 Pro for just $588. That saves you about $30 overall and is a pretty good deal. For $459 US dollars, the M7 Pro is a professional resin 3D printer at mid-level prices. Unlike many other brands, Anycubic doesn't restrict you on resin choices or slicer settings. You have full control to experiment with different resins or tweak settings. Settings, and that is refreshing. I can see the M7 Pro being a good fit for both hobbyists or small business owners looking for a resin printer that is easy to use, while giving you the ability to fine-tune settings for any resin you want. If that is what you are looking for, then the M7 Pro is a resin printer for you. So thank you all for watching my review of the Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro Resin 3D Printer. What is your favorite feature? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And I have plenty of upcoming projects and reviews in the works, so be sure to subscribe to Hoffman Engineering so you don't miss out on those coming soon. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.